Hi guys, Julie Golub here. Thanks for stopping by. And today's video is one that has been highly requested lately. If you're new to my channel, I'm a professional competition shooter traveling the world with guns and ammo. And a lot of you have asked, how on earth do I do this? How do I travel outside of the country with guns and ammo? Well, if you wanna know, just keep watching. I recently got back from Chateauroux, France for the International Practical Shooting Association World Shoot. Had a ton of fun. But in this video, I want to talk specifically about traveling with guns and ammo. And generally, it's really not that complicated because there are procedures already in place. You are not the pioneer in the world traveling to a major city for the first time with a gun. No. The shooting sports organizations, or even if you're a hunter, they generally set things up in advance. So this is going to be a somewhat seamless process. So keep in mind that this isn't like you're going rogue and just trying to fly with guns and ammo somewhere across the globe. There is definitely a procedure in place and each country is different, but for the most part, they're all very similar in how you can apply to get into a country with firearms, especially when it comes to competition. Specifically for France and the IPSC World Shoot, everything is done in advance. This is not like a last minute decision. We're like, hey, honey, let's travel to France so I can go shoot the world shoot. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to uh, pay your entry fee and get things started, all the paperwork in place well in advance. So at the beginning of the year, we of course paid our entry fee and filled out all the appropriate information, passport, documentation, all of that good stuff. But in addition to that, we provided valuable information like the make, model, serial number of the firearms that we were bringing, as well as the ammunition type, caliber, and uh, how much we were gonna bring with us. And that was the beginning foundation for the shooting sports organization and the match organizers to begin to start the process of applying for the correct paperwork for us to come into the country. So that's how to get into the country, but you also have to think about how you're going to get back into the US. So whenever you're traveling with firearms abroad, it's important to stop over to your local border patrol office and uh, let them know that you need a Form 4457. And this piece of documentation is a verification of personal effects taken abroad. Basically, it's a piece of paper that says, hey, you own this gun in the United States, you're leaving with it, and you're coming back in with it. It's not like you found it on the streets of Paris, right? <laughs> no. And it's very, very easy. All you have to do is find a local Border Patrol office, make sure that you keep your firearms locked and in your vehicle, don't just bring them into a federal building, then you could get into some trouble. But I went ahead and printed this form out online, it filled it all out so that when I came into the office, I said, hey, this is what I got. They're like, all right, we got you covered and followed their instructions so that I could get my official paperwork saying that these guns were indeed mine and that I would be traveling back in the country with them. So the next important thing to think about is how you're going to travel overseas. And I highly, highly recommend that when you're making those reservations for your flights and even for your rental car, that you stick with American carriers, Delta, United, American Airlines, any of those will work. But I find there's a level of comfort in flying with an American carrier because someone is always eventually going to speak English if you need them to. And you know the rules that are in place within that specific airline. So that's very, very helpful. The other thing you wanna make sure is that you plan time accordingly. If you're going to have any layovers, you need to think about where that layover is and if there's any history of people uh, having some difficult challenges with firearms. For example, I do not fly in and out of New York, Washington DC, or Baltimore, Maryland with guns. It's a general rule. So I don't want to make that my layover, my check-in point when I travel here in the US either. It's not the time to really make those layovers tight. You want to make sure that you plan enough time so that if you do have something happen, and you do have to talk to some sort of airline employee or some sort of government official in between flights that you have plenty of time to do that so that you can get to your final destination, whether that's your destination to compete or home sweet home. Let's talk about gun storage. I travel with hard side suitcases and these are low gel suitcases. This is not sponsored at all. <laughs> I got them on ebags.com uh, with a nice little coupon. 
but these are awesome. I really love hard side cases when I'm traveling anywhere, even in the US and overseas both, because it adds that extra level of protection. It keeps everything dry and I feel like everything is so much more secure. And what I really like about these particular suitcases, other than the fact that they're hard sided and pretty much watertight, is the fact that they do have combination TSA locks on the outside. I also like to travel with hard side cases inside my suitcase. These are just Smith Wesson combo cases that I, I I like a lot. They're a little bit heavy, they're a little bit bulky, but I can actually fit three 1911s in here, which is really, really awesome. And I love combinations because the last thing I wanna do is fumble around with keys or lose keys, especially when I'm traveling overseas. I don't have to deal with like having to have to bust into a case, none of that. So combinations are really my favorite way to go. When traveling to France, I actually had to make an additional purchase of some trigger locks. I never thought I would be buying some trigger locks, but indeed I did. <laughs> and that was because the French French government has a very specific rule about traveling with firearms and you have to have them locked up in such an inaccessible way that you can possibly use them if you needed to in any quick manner. So this was an additional purchase that I had to make. So now I have some extra trigger locks that I can use in the event that I need to have them for traveling overseas anyway. So it may seem redundant, but I actually like to travel with two of these cases because there have been times when I've been overseas that they've required that I place my magazines in a locked case or my ammunition in a locked case. And this is been a lifesaver for me. Also, if for some reason your gun case breaks or the locks don't work anymore, now you have a backup. And it's not like you can just drive to a local sporting goods store and get a case for your guns. This is not something that's that easy to find when you're traveling overseas. So I like that added little backup plan just in case. So let's talk about ammunition. Now, generally in the US, American carriers, they allow one person 11 pounds of ammunition when they fly. But if you're shooting a major competition like the World Shoot, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> so a lot of people bring a loved one or friend with them as the extra bonus of getting to travel overseas so that they can have their 11 pounds so that they have a total of 22 pounds of ammunition to get them by. But in the case of France, for us, the U.S. team shipped a large pallet. We went through a big, big, oh, it was an elaborate process to get all of the approvals through customs and this, that, and the other thing to ship our ammunition to France so that we could have what we know and love here and shoot in the United States with us overseas. But the vast majority of times, that's not going to be possible. So you either have to bring your ammunition with you in your suitcases with a buddy, or you can use match ammunition. IPSC competitions always have a match ammunition source where you can purchase ammo in case you couldn't bring enough. And there are definitely pluses and minuses to that. If you use match ammunition, you don't have to go through a chronograph procedure, everything's all good to go but you also don't know how that ammo is going to feel or perform in your firearm. And that can be a little bit dicey, especially if you have highly customized firearms. I generally shoot stock gun divisions and my MMPs and my 1911s eat just about anything. So that wasn't a level of stress for me. And I definitely put my name on the list as that backup to purchase ammunition should the situation with customs fall through. But at the same time, if you can get your hands on some of that match ammo here in the United States to test it out through your firearm and see how it shoots, that's a good thing. You'll also want to plan a little bit of extra time if you're shooting match ammunition that you've never shot before to see if you can go test it out and double check your zero at a practice range nearby. Usually these matches have those things set up, but it's really a good idea so that you can make sure that, you know, when the buzzer sounds for the, the first shot in the match, it's actually going to hit the target where you want it to. So one final tip for you guys whenever you are flying in and out of a country with firearms and ammunition is to plan a lot of time. If you think two hours is good enough, make it four hours because you just don't know if you're gonna have a communication challenge or if the procedure is gonna be slow, if the airport's gonna be busy. When we left the award ceremony for the world shoot, we got back at midnight and we got up at 2.30 to get on the road for the three hour drive to Paris so that we would have three and a half hours in the airport should we run into any difficulties. And that was plenty of time. We were able to get a nice breakfast while we were waiting for our flight. And that was okay because everything was so low stress. So it's really not that complicated. You just check the boxes, get all the paperwork done that you need to get done and plan enough time. 
so I have a lot of footage from the world shoot. I've actually <laughs> overloaded my computer hard drive with so much video, but I'm going to be putting together a series of videos from the actual match and the competition. I'm gonna try something a little bit different than my normal stage breakdown series here and kind of go through things by day and kind of give you my thoughts and feelings and, and uh, what I was going through personally for each day of the world shoot. I thought I would do a little extra spin on that, so stay tuned. And of course, if you like this video, I would appreciate the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you think this video is valuable to someone you know that's about to travel with firearms, send the link on over and share it, because sharing is caring. <laughs> but as I always like to say, thank you so much for watching and be safe and have fun.